Hey, Steve here. In this video, I'm showing you three more practical examples of how to use luminosity masks in Photoshop to give your landscape photos the wow factor. The techniques I'm using here do make use of what I showed in a previous video about how to create shadow, midtone, and highlight selections. So if any of what I show you here moves a little quickly for you, then you can just catch up on that earlier video to get up to speed. Uh, so I'll put a link to that video in the top corner now. Uh, but you can click that little eye icon anytime to uh, watch that previous video. Uh, so in that previous video, I did show how to create shadow midtone and highlight selections or masks. Now in this video, I'm showing you uh, three examples of stuff that you can do with them. So let me know in the comments which of these three techniques is going to be your favorite and which one you think you'll get the most out of using. And remember, you can hit the thumbs up button to let me know if you like the video and these techniques so I can keep sharing more videos just like this. And if you want to be notified each time I publish new videos, then remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification icon. The first example I've got for you is how to use a uh, mid-tone selection to increase mid-tone contrast. So we're going to do this over in the channels panel. And you know, remember you've got that first video just up in the corner ready to watch if any of this um, is getting a bit ahead of where you are right now with luminosity masks. Uh, so we're going to create our mid-tones um, channel that we can then load as a selection to create a contrast adjustment. Now the way that we do that is uh, first I'm going to command or control click on RGB and that loads a selection which I can then save as a new channel. This is alpha one now. So I'm just gonna double click this to rename it H for highlights. So this is our highlights channel. I'll deselect command or control D. Now I'll duplicate this. I'll just drag it down onto the new layer icon. And let's rename this S for shadows. And I'm gonna press command or control I to invert. So this is our shadows um, channel or selection. Now to create the midtones, what we need to do is basically start with a selection of the entire image and then subtract each of these highlights and shadow selections from it. So what we do here next is uh, click back on the RGB channel and press command or control A. So that basically selects the whole image regardless of any luminosity information. Uh, starting with this selection, we can then on the keyboard hold Command Option or Control and Alt for Windows users, and you'll see the little um, you know the mouse cursor there changes to a finger with a minus in a box. So just there. Um, now that means that when I click on the highlights channel, it's going to subtract from the currently active selection. So so far we've selected the entire image and now we've uh, we've subtracted the highlights and now we need to do the same thing to subtract the shadows now we've got this warning here no pixels more than blah 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 don't worry about it it's not actually an error um, you know i've had so many people in the past um, kind of stop when they see this assuming that it is an error it's just information basically it's telling us that our selection is no longer going to be shown on the screen by the marching ants. So the selection is still active, it hasn't disappeared, it's not gone anywhere. We just can't see it. So now with this selection uh, active, we can click Save Selection as Channel. And now we get that new alpha channel that we can rename to M for midtones. And what this is, uh, you know, what this has given us is a channel where the highlights have been masked out and the shadows have been masked out. And so that leaves the midtones. So the way that we can now turn this into a midtone contrast adjustment is by first loading it again. So command or control, click on the M channel. And again, we get this message, not the error. It's a message just saying, we're not gonna see the selection edges. Click okay. Click on RGB channel, back over into layers, and now let's add a curves adjustment. And now, because that selection was active when we added the curves adjustment, 
the uh, selection has been now been loaded into the layer mask of the uh, curves adjustment. And from here, we can just add an S curve to increase the contrast in the image. And we can do that with pretty much total confidence that we're not going to overexpose the highlights. And we're not going to underexpose the shadows because they are both masked out automatically. So let's have a look at the before and after on this. And we can see there's a bit of a boost in contrast through those midtones. But like I said, the, the highlights there, especially that sun, sun star, is not overexposing and the darkest shadows have not underexposed. Now let me show you what this adjustment would look like if we didn't have this mask active. So I'll shift click to disable the mask. And there we go, it's a very, very contrasty uh, image there, especially in the shadows where we've lost all that shadow information and this gone completely black. And so here's re-enabling the mask and here's just disabling and re-enabling the adjustment a couple of times to see the difference it's making. Now, the second thing that I wanted to show you was kind of following along the similar idea as what we just did there with the, uh, the mid-tones. This time we're gonna use the highlights to, uh, to warm the image in the highlights only. So over in the channels panel, we can command or control click on H. Now click on RGB again, come to layers. Now there's a, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can warm the, sh uh, warm the highlights in an image. Um, let's just use the photo filter adjustment layer here. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of ways, but you can, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's use photo filter. So that's a warming filter and it's already been applied, but because we had that um, highlights channel or selection loaded and active when we added it, then it's been added automatically into the layer mask of this warming filter. And as you can see there, when I toggle this off and on, maybe I'll just increase the, the density or the strength of it for a little bit. Uh, just, just for demonstration purposes, we can see the sky and the water and all, all of the light kind of shining on the rocks here. That's getting warmer, but the, um, you know, especially up here in the, in the cliffs and all the other sort of dark parts, all the shadows in the rocks here, they are not really taking that effect on as much. And we can see firsthand the difference this makes, uh, you know, this layer mask is making by again, disabling it. So here's what the effect looks like just applied without the mask in full strength. And now here's what it looks like being masked out of the shadows so that it leaves the highlights visible. And there we go, that is how you can, well that's one way that you can warm the highlights in your image. Great for sunrise and sunset photography. Um, you know, without overpowering the whole image with that warming filter. Now the third and final uh, example that I've got for you is not gonna use layer masks at all. The effect that I'm gonna go for is basically to, um, to use a brush to paint in some, uh, some warmth and some extra sort of color into some of these uh, rocks here. Uh, and the way that we're gonna do that is first, we're going to add a new layer to the image. Then I'm gonna change the blend mode to, I'll start with overlay and then we may, may uh, change it to soft light depending on if we want to tone the effect down a bit. Um, but now I'm going to select with the brush, just going to select a warmish color from up here somewhere and click OK. Now, if I was just to take this brush directly into this uh, layer and just brush around here, you can see it's, uh, it's a very, very strong golden effect. Um, and yeah, it can look good when done well. But the problem with this at the moment is that it's kind of indiscriminate. You know, we're, we're brushing into the shadows as much as we are into the highlights, unless we're being very, very, very careful with where we're putting the brush. So uh, yeah, what we can do is actually load a highlights selection and then brush through that directly into this layer. So similar to brushing into a layer mask, but you know, there's nothing about this technique that 
requires you use it only in a mask. So this is something I like to do um, just to kind of push the boundaries of what we can do with these selections really. So back over into channels. Now I'm going to load the highlight selection again. So command or control click on H. Back over into layers. I'm going to click back on my uh, top new empty layer here. Um, and I'm going to hide the marching ants with command or control H. The selection is still active. Uh, and now I'm just going to try brushing into the lighter parts of the rock. So the effect we're going for here is to basically increase that kind of golden light effect of the sun hitting one side of the uh, of the rocks here. So you can do that just by brushing into those parts that have already got that effect on it. And then also down here. Actually, I might turn the brush down a little bit. Uh, and then get some of these rocks at the front. And let's put the brush down to maybe, well, let's go 18%. Brush around here, just sort of warming up some of those golden edges, just sort of enhancing that golden effect that already kind of exists. Now, you might be wondering, you know, what the point of the uh, luminosity selection was, but, um, you know, why not just, just brush with the brush because it looks like I'm just brushing everywhere anyway. Um, but let me just show you now what it looks like if I just add a temporary layer in between. Uh, let's, um, hang on, what am I doing? Undo. Okay, got a black layer here now, and now let's change this top layer that we were brushing into back to normal. Now we can see here, this is actually what I've brushed and this is what I've applied as that golden light effect. And you can see because of that luminosity selection that was restricting the brush strokes to, uh, to the lighter parts of these rocks, uh, you know, and, and away from the shadows, it's just created a lot more dimension and, you know, the, uh, the darker parts of the image are being affected less in the same way that, you know, when we brush through a selection into a layer mask, um, so, you know, this is just another great way of uh, brushing or using a luminosity selection to add an effect, whatever that effect may be, to a certain tonal range within the image. So if you want to subscribe to my channel and keep up to date with all the new videos that I'm publishing, then just hit the icon on the screen right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.